Hey guys, I've been working on my trailer lately and I'm running into a little bit of a problem recording videos. It is 108 degrees and my cameras keep overheating. So I'm gonna go inside where it's a little cooler and I'll talk to you there. We've been having a bit of a heat wave in Texas and it's making it really difficult to, first of all, work outside, but also to record anything. Every time I hit record, I get two or three minutes and then my camera overheats and I don't know that. So I record a portion of the video only to find out nothing recorded. In my last video, I installed some Anchor F2000 power stations into my tool trailer. And I also talked a little bit about my tool trailer and some of the projects that I had coming with it. After that last video, I ordered a bunch of parts and they're starting to come in now. And I really wanna start installing them. However, trying to record the process is not going well. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a tour of my trailer and talk about some of the things I have coming up in the future. This is a 14 foot long by six and a half foot wide cargo trailer and it's dual axle. They're both 3,500 pound axles and the suspension is rated for 7,000 pounds. But I think the trailer itself is actually rated at 6,500 GVW, which is fine. I don't really plan on ever getting that heavy. All right, so this is my trailer. I went with mostly Milwaukee Packout. Just got some brackets. I just installed these last weekend and I really like them because you can flip them up, tuck them away, and close them down like that, and you're good to travel. So, I still have this cabinet, which is actually working out really well. It's the perfect size for paper towels, rolls, rags, things like that. So I decided to just keep it. Works for me for now. When I bought this trailer, it was set up for camping. It was a little conversion trailer. There was a bed here, uh, a bunk bed actually, and there was a shower in the back. Back here, this was a shower, which I removed. I still have the, the bathroom mirror, which this I'm using for storage of spray cans and things like that. It's the perfect size. I got my spare tire mounted in here. That may end up going somewhere else, but I haven't figured that one out yet. This monstrosity is the, the whole system that contains the, the portable AC. It's a vertical unit and it vents out underneath the floor. It's actually the guy who installed it did a great job with it, but it's just taking up way too much space. For now, I'm using it as a mount for my tool bags. The other issue I have is it blows straight up underneath the shelf. So I have this little fan to help blow the, the cool air out. Not really ideal. Having that AC up here would be a huge improvement. My quick grab for the paper towels, we got my tape, all that kind of stuff here. These pack out boxes are easy to take off the wall. Just lift them up and they come off. I really like that. And of course I have a workbench, which right now is just storing some stuff. When I disassembled the bunk beds, I kept most of those materials and used it to build this bench. I originally had two layers of plywood here and I beveled the corner. I had this nice thick beam going through here. Uh, but then I came across this nice finished polyurethane pine table and I cut it to fit. Kind of had a little Little measurement issue back here. Couldn't bring myself to throw it away. Kind of makes it look a lot nicer in here. These lights are not mounted where I want them. They're, but they're good enough. I'm just going to leave them for now. I'm probably going to get some type of overhead light to shine down. Uh, these were one for each bunk bed. In fact, you can see where the bunk beds were mounted before. This TV, I decided to mount in here. It was in my fifth wheel in the outdoor kitchen. I wasn't using it. And I even had the, the mount and everything came with it put an Apple TV on it. So if I get bored, I can always watch something. This, believe it or not, I found in the dumpster. It's all metal, it's, it's very solid. And the only thing that was missing on it were these rubber feet, which I bought on Amazon for, I think three or $4. So now I have a, a decent stool for free. And I have all my drawers here. I just got all my, my miscellaneous stuff in here. One of the things I like about Packout is these modular boxes mount to these floor plates. And then these bars come out, they come up and they lock. So when I go down the road, I don't have to worry about my drawers opening. It's also being a modular system, I can move things around. So, you know, if I want that to go over there, I can. If you look, these are mounted on the bottom with a shelf. These are mounted on the back with that wall plate. So there's no reason I couldn't take these boxes and mount them over here and take these and move them over there. The entire system is modular and I really, really like it. 
Granted, it's expensive, you pay for it, but my plan is to keep this stuff for a good 20 years. These are all sheet metal screws. If I decide that I need to take sheet metal screws with me, I can just do that, lay it on here, lock it into place. So these modules all stack together. They simply slide out. There is a locking mechanism right here, you can see. And it's got this plate, so it all locks together. They're not gonna fall out, because I can take this entire unit off, like this. You know, so these are stacked together like this. You can put it on, lock it into place. You can actually take this entire thing off as a unit. They are also IP67 rated. They have a rubber O-ring in it and they lock, lock in place. The other thing I like about it is it comes with little boxes. So for instance, if I didn't want to take the entire box with me, I could just swap this out for this one and go on my merry way. So my eventual plan is to systematize all of this. I really haven't come up with a good system yet, but you know, each one of these boxes would be a different category, you know, a certain type of fastener or something like that. So these are the barn doors rather than the fold down ramp, which I prefer because the fold down ramp means you got to open the whole thing. With this setup, I can just open one door at a time and I was able to put my ladder on it. When the door opens, the ladder opens with it. This, I don't know, I'm probably gonna have to get rid of this. This isn't really working out very well. Everything just kind of bangs around back here. So I set it up with these removable boxes. These also just, they're hard to do one-handed. These come out. So I have rags and bungee cords in here. I have cleaning materials up there, and then I have all my liquids, solvents, alcohol, vinegar, all kinds of stuff down there. And then down here, I'm just keeping various large items. Honey wagon, water tanks, uh, miscellaneous five gallon buckets. These are all old t-shirts that I use for rags. I've seen a ton of other tool trailers and one of the things they do that I didn't want to do is they usually build everything out of plywood into the trailer itself. I have no intention on keeping this trailer forever, so I kind of want to make all of my investment removable. All these wall plates, all these boxes, everything can get taken out. I can install it into a home garage. I can install it into another trailer, whatever. I don't really need to worry about it being built into the trailer itself. I don't know how long I'm going to keep this trailer. It might be a year, it might be five years, but when I'm done with it, I want to be able to take the vast majority of my stuff out of it. Underneath here, I have my random box of large tools. Got some RV tank cleaner, some spare wood that I have floating around, some empty shelf in here. This sink is gonna come out. I don't really need it right now. It's basically just holding some miscellaneous items. I had these old Ryobi tools and there's nothing wrong with them, so I decided to keep them. Now I do need to optimize this. Again, I had to remove a lot of stuff in here and I still don't know how I'm gonna set all this up. I have some long tools in here that, some crimpers and things like that, that I don't have a big enough spot for. So I'm actually looking at getting a real normal metal toolbox that I think will go right here once I get rid of this AC. So that portable AC is really eating up a lot of my space. I thought I was gonna be able to quickly throw an AC on the roof, but that's, that's not working. So I gotta come up with a new plan for that and it's, it's actually getting a little frustrating. One of the most important things I need to get installed in the trailer is an air conditioner. I currently have a portable air conditioner installed behind me, but it's not keeping up. Right now, I think it's about, let's see, it's 92 degrees in here. It's 108 outside and this AC has been running continuously. I even have this little fan down here to help kind of push the air back and circulate it. This front part gets very hot and it's actually pretty comfortable right here, right where the air is coming out. But other than that, it's, it's crazy hot in here, especially back here. So I need to get an AC installed and that's gonna go right here, I think but I'm running into a lot of problems with that. So let me go up on the roof and show you what I'm talking about. When I bought the trailer, I was really happy that it had this uh, walkway on it. it. Makes life a lot easier. I can throw a ladder up here. I got a couple other things I need to mount up here eventually once I get the AC done. This is a Max Air fan. I love it, I wanna leave it. But I have an issue where I wanna put the AC in this 14 inch opening. I'd rather not have to cut a new one. But no matter how I slice it, this aluminum plank has to get moved over and I cannot find an air conditioner that will fit in here. So that means I have to cut this, move these platforms over so that I have enough room for it. Now, of course, the downside to that is I'm gonna lose strength in these beams. 
So my plan is to get some two by two aluminum square tubing and I'll run a, a bracket from here all the way down here and that will give support to the centerpiece. The AC will go in here like this and then all of these will move over and underneath I'll run another two by two piece of square aluminum tubing. So basically I'm gonna be bracing this from there and there using a, a tube across it. It's the best I can come up with. I really need to get AC and I gotta figure out a way to do it. So if you guys have any ideas on how I can do that, please let me know, because I've been working on this for three weeks and I still don't have a good answer. All right, back down the ladder. And this is right about the time my camera's gonna overheat. So I was thinking about doing a mini split. I could install the mini split head up there, but that means I need to put the compressor unit down here. And that would mean I need to get rid of the propane tanks, which I might do and just run the generator off of gas. But for now, I'd really like to keep the propane tanks. This trailer comes with the extended tongue, so I have a little bit more room to work with. And that brings me to the next thing, which is the generator and the generator mount. Let me go in and show you that. So this is my, my air conditioner. I basically just put the, the camera inside of here to cool it down. So I ended up grabbing a Champion dual fuel, 4,500 watt inverter generator. I was trying to record a video about that, but of course my camera kept overheating, so that didn't work out. So I got the generator, it's only got six hours on it. I filled it with oil, I hooked it up to a couple small loads and I did the break-in process. Running it on propane, pretty quiet, which is just, uh, I think five hours of, of runtime. I actually changed the oil twice during that process. And so far it's been great, I like it. It's a good generator, but it's not gonna do me any good sitting there. So I did some measurements on that and it does fit in the front, but I wanted a way to get it up off the ground. So I bought one of these fancy Stromberg Carlson trailer trays, which is basically exactly what I need. This accessory mounts to the frame of the trailer, you can see here, and it goes over your propane tanks. Then I'm gonna get someone to help me hoist it up there. That generator is not weatherproof, so I do have also this Champion generator cover uh, I did a bunch of reading on the reviews. It seems to be pretty good. I can't run it with the cover on, but for the most part, it's sunny in Texas. We don't get a whole lot of rain here. So my plan is to leave it covered when it's not in use. And then when I need to go someplace and run my AC, I can fire it up. But we also go like a month at a time without rain, especially during the summer, which is mostly when I run the AC. So for the most part, I'm probably gonna leave it uncovered. That is, is really the most pressing issue I have right now is it's just too hot to work out here. In theory, each one of these tanks will give me 14 hours of runtime on the generator. That gives me a couple days of runtime without having to deal with gasoline. One of the main reasons I want to run off of propane is I know in the future there's going to be times where I don't use that generator for probably two or three months at a time and I'd rather not have gas sitting in it. I also don't want to have to keep gas inside the trailer, and with this kind of heat, I don't want to have to leave the gas cans outside. I've seen people that mount their gas cans on the, the fenders here, and if I realize that I need to do that, I will, but right now, I'm really trying to run on propane. It will cost more money than gas, but I, I think it's gonna be worth it. It also seems to be much cleaner running. It doesn't uh, cause as much carbon deposit in the generator itself, and it extends the life of the oil, at least that's what I read. Also, I just got this Waysafe hitch in the mail. Waysafe sent that out to me to test out, but I'm gonna be making another video about that in the future. And that is to replace my Anderson weight distribution system, which I don't really need anymore. I'm not towing with an extension, and I definitely can handle the trailer with the truck, so I think I'm gonna be taking all of this off and replacing it with the Waysafe hitch, which is a adjustable. I think it's a 10 inch version. And the great thing about it is it's gonna let me keep track of my tongue weight. There's Sasha, she's watering trees today. Brutally hot. Once I get my tools more organized and I finish building the storage system, I'll give you another tour of that and show you what I've come up with. I still have a lot of things to build and a lot of annoyances to fix. The big one right now is the heat. I just need an AC in here. I've been looking at Mr. Cool for mini splits because that means I can install it with minimal tools and experience. I've never installed a mini split system. 
I know the general concept, but I don't have a vacuum pump and I don't want to have to deal with refrigerant, things like that. So the Mr. Cool systems are really nice. I also found an air conditioner that I really like by RecPro. It's a 13,000 or a 15,000 BTU AC, and it also has a heat pump because I'll be using this in the winter as well, and it would be great to have decent heat in here. I just want to use that 14 inch opening and install an AC, but I got to come up with a way to deal with my racks. So if I can do that, I might be throwing a Rec Pro AC up there. If I really can't figure it out, then I very well might get a Mr. Cool AC and remove the propane tanks. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? What do you think? Is there something I'm missing? Are there other ACs that I'm missing? I do know that there is a an under bench AC, I think they call it, where they install them under the benches in travel trailers. In this, this water heater I need to get rid of. It's not doing me any good and I could actually put that AC right here, but it doesn't have a heat pump and I think it's only 12,000 BTU. It didn't look very efficient. People complain that it's noisy. So I think I'm not gonna do that. Oh yeah, that reminds me, I have another question for you guys. Maybe you have some experience with this. I need to remove the water heater because I'm not gonna use it. But then it's gonna leave this giant hole in the wall. So I'm kind of thinking about putting an external uh, storage box out here so I have outdoor storage but if you guys have any ideas on how to seal that up once I'm done with it please let me know I'd appreciate it now another thing as part of the tool trailer itself I have the truck so with the truck I still have various items that I store in here wow that's hot uh, tire chains ratchet straps things like that in here oh. and that that's got that's a hundred and something degrees And then just blocks, mostly blocks in here. Some hitch accessories, I got some chain, things like that. So I'm thinking about putting something like this into this compartment. So I'd love to hear your ideas if you have any. Give you an idea of how hot this is. So that's about 115, 120 degrees. My tires are 180 degrees. See how hot the paint is. 170, 168 degrees. So that's black. Now on the white, it's about 130 degrees. I really wish now that I live in Texas, I wish I had a, a white truck. What a huge difference. So I'm gonna be installing these components over the next few days. I'd like to get that generator mounted and I'd like to get this AC figured out. I will be making a video about the new hitch and that'll be in the future. So make sure you're subscribed, click the little bell icon so you get notified. I'm gonna leave some links to the products that I talked about in this video down in the description. My hope is to make some videos about each one of them as I get them installed. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. It's 155 degrees. Wow, that's hot. Side of this battery box is 174 degrees. Look at that, that's insane. Propane tank. 150, 150 degrees crazy.